name is Tony Lumu Bumade, and I'm the founder CEO of Precious Conceptions, Nigeria's foremost holistic family building consultancy. What I do is fertility management, holistic fertility management, and that means we help intending parents identify, improve, and maximize their conception chances. I waited 13 years to be a mom. It was whilst I was on that journey that I decided I was going to step in the gap and do something to help other people. Okay, so what happened to me, I had fibroids and I went for surgery after like six years of managing fibroids unsuccessfully. I went in for a surgery and then I had post-surgery complications and I lost the functionality of my uterus. So the, the option that was available for me was surrogacy. We didn't tell our immediate families what was going on initially until our fifth wedding anniversary our father-in-law was like what is going on you know and he was upset he thought we were not serious about it and and then myself and my, my husband we started talking about it but we're christians so we were like okay let's keep trying and then the sixth year we kept trying and then i told him bros come we need to start looking inwards and go to the hospital seriously and see what's going on and he said no so initially my husband was against the idea of hospital it was you've done a lot of tests doctors are poking you you're losing your privacy I don't like how they are just doing all sorts to you no 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 and I started getting worried so because he's the sort of person that is a bit um, detached from all of these sentiments he appeared to me as someone who was aloof, someone who didn't care. At a point, I had to tell my parents and my, my siblings what was going on, that we were really trying, and I had a post-surgery complication. I didn't even get to know until it was the ninth, tenth year of my marriage that I had a complication. Okay, so I now had to break the news gently to them. We didn't say anything to my in-laws yet because it was, it was a struggle um, facing that reality that I might not be able to conceive ever. It was, it was horrid, you know, all the various tests I had to go through, um, seeing doctors going through back-to-back -back surgeries. My, my family members were there all the way, supporting, driving me to the hospital, giving me a shoulder to cry on. They were there all the way. But still, we didn't share the gravity of what was going on with his family because we were also struggling with it. Um, at the point when surrogacy was looking at us like this is the only way out for you guys, my husband was still saying, no, I don't want IVF, I don't want surrogacy. And I'm like, I don't mind. I am the one going into in and out of the theater like I'm going to Lagos market. You understand? I don't want to die. I understood that having a gestational career is more or less like you doing it yourself because there's no DNA matter transferred from, you know, vertically transferred from the host, the genetic, um, I mean, the surrogate into, to the child. So when I saw that clearly, I was like, okay, it seems this one is a reasonable thing for me to do. And I embraced it. He still struggled. And at the time when we left for India in March 2010, we had to confide in everybody. Everybody meaning our immediate family. Um, my dad was late. His own dad was late. His own parents are late. So we told our siblings, look, we are going for help in India and it's looking like it's surrogacy. The struggle really was, am I a woman? Um, if I'm not able to carry a child, am I a woman? Mentally, it was hard. I love babies. And I tell people I want to have nine children. I like having children around me, even to my old age. Let them run around and scatter the house, I don't care. So not being able to have for 13 years, it was like something was stolen from me. And then we came back with twins uh, because we lost two along the way in the pregnancy. And initially I didn't want to share 
Because I, I was in India, nobody saw me pregnant. So it was so easy to keep quiet. And my children look exactly like me. Photocopy. Because they used my eggs. She was just a host. So it was so very easy not to talk about my experience, to let people assume I had gotten pregnant eventually and then have children. And it was a struggle initially for me to share. Um, my husband was very open. Even whilst we were pregnant, he was telling all our friends and people in church because I was away for two years. And people were asking, where's your wife? Where's your wife? And he was like, oh, we are going through IVF surrogacy. And finally, our surrogate is pregnant. And I will scream, stop telling everybody with this surrogacy. Don't embarrass me with this one, you know. And people were like, ah, what is surrogacy? What exactly is that? Indian, won't your children be Indian? And then, you know, from their reaction, I realized there's so much ignorance out there. There's so much mystery out there. People do not know exactly what this process is all about. They just saw me come back home with children looking like Slimmy because I had lost a lot of weight. And they are wondering, ah, your tummy is not big. And I was able to lactate and breastfeed. So it was, I was just a puzzle to a lot of people. So I decided, you know what, let me push my shame. Then I was still a bit ashamed. Let me push my embarrassment aside and face this thing head on. And I drew strength from the, from, from, from the Lord. And he said to me, write down your story. And I started writing down your story. Right from India, I started writing, writing my experiences, what happened, and I started writing down. And eventually, I took a bold step. I started sharing with strangers. I made up my mind I was going to talk to them. It was only a matter of when. I think it was 2019, before the COVID thing. Um, we had come back from church on watch night service day. We had done the Happy New Year thing and cool. And we came back home here and um, they were in their room. And as, this, as I stepped into, into my daughter's room, I just had a funny feeling, talk to them about, about how they were born. And I called them and I said, guys, um, you know what mommy does? They said, yes. I said, okay, so explain what surrogacy is to me. And they explained to me the way they understood. And I said, okay, what if I tell you guys you were born through surrogacy? and you could see the different expressions on their faces. And the girl just went very quiet on me. And the boy was like, um, what do you mean? And I said, exactly what you heard. I couldn't carry you guys in my tummy, so Auntie Puja, you know Auntie Puja? They said, yes. Immediately I said that I started crying. I just broke down I said, and my son gave me a huge, he just held me like this and he hugged me really tight. And he said, mommy, it's okay, that's fine. And my daughter just went so quiet and said, you know, mommy, now I know what, why you do what you do in Precious Conception. Surrogacy is redemption. The Lord restored all my lost years. And I tell people, if that is your option, embrace it. You don't need to be ashamed. The Bible says none shall be barren. It didn't say you shall be pregnant yourself. 